Steel Rising is an action RPG Souls-like developed by Spiders and published by Nacon. Now we have a bit of a history with Spiders games on this channel. Some of my first reviews are of Spiders games. They're usually janky, but I'm impressed by their ability as developers to improve from low budget jank, you know, like Mars Warlogs and Bound by Flame, to decently playable games like The Technomancer and Greedfall. Obviously, they still have problems, but I became invested in Spiders games. They announced Greedfall 2 last year, and I'm looking forward to that. But before that, we have Steel Rising, a Souls like. That surprised me since combat is not exactly Spiders' forte and you need good combat for Souls-like. They have improved over the years, but not enough for Souls-like in my opinion. Maybe this is a test for a tighter combat system in Greedfall 2. Who knows? Anyway, let's see if Steel Rising makes my steel rise. <laughs> Dude, there had to be a penis joke somewhere here. The graphics look alright. It looks kind of blurry though, which is also an issue in Greedfall, so I had to install Reshade to sharpen the image up a bit. The environments are detailed and the main character and enemy designs look cool. You can see the innards of Aegis, the main character, from her back with the gears moving and shit. It's awesome. The facial animations on the human characters look really stiff though, and their designs don't look especially interesting. This game is set in an alternate universe during the French Revolution with killer robots and shit, so I don't think it would kill the devs to spruce up the fashion around that time to fit the theme better. The world itself could look more sci-fi-y too, since humanoid robots exist but everything else is still plain old 17th century France. It's like they went from having witch trials near the local village well to cyberpunk without anything in between. Overall the graphics are decent, but the performance is horrible. The frame rates vary inconsistent no matter how low the settings are. Apparently the in-game resync halves the frame rate when the GPU usage is full. I turn on resync in my GPU control panel instead of using the in-game one and the random stutter stopped. Is it placebo? Who knows? Because this game is not optimized. My PC can run Resident Evil 4 Remake at near max settings at 1440p 60fps. RE4 looks at least 3 times better than Steel Rising. Trust me, my steel rose higher when playing Resident Evil 4 than Steel Rising. What I'm saying is, Steel Rising's graphics doesn't warrant the kind of performance it's giving. There are many instances where the frames fuck off out of nowhere. It's very inconsistent. The only way I've found to get consistent frames is to lower both the shadow resolution and shadow distance settings to low, which should not happen. Also, this is with DLSS on. I don't even want to imagine a game with it off. My eyeballs would recede back into my brain like reverse puberty. Overall, graphics are decent, performance is ass. The gameplay loop consists of going through levels, killing robots, fighting big robot bosses, and unlock Vestals, the bonfires of this game, and shortcuts along the way. Before starting the game, you can customize Aegis. There aren't many options, but it has the essentials. Well, except for one. Where's the titty slider, you motherfucker? Steel Rising is more similar to Bloodborne than any of the other Souls-like games. You are incentivized to be aggressive. Enemies can be staggered and you can perform a takedown attack afterwards. And if you run out of stamina, you can quickly fill it back up by pressing the interact key in time to use the cooling system. And of course, you can collect souls of dead robots, it makes sense in the story, and level up to increase stats. You can also collect keys to upgrade your module holes to equip better perks. I mostly enjoy this combat system, especially when Bloodborne is nowhere to be found on PC. When's Bloodborne PC, you motherfucker? There's some flaws though, like the enemy telegraphing. Since robotic motions are inherently harder to telegraph than human movements, it takes some time to get used to. But once you do, the game is a walk in the park while getting your balls fondled. You can brute force most enemies and bosses. Just keep dodging your way behind them, stun them by filling their stun meter, do a takedown attack, and end it with a little charge attack at the end. It's very abusable, and I didn't expect that to work with the bosses as well. Bosses can switch forms, if you can even call it that, as you fight them. They just add an elemental attribute to their weapon and maybe one new move. The fights become predictable after a while, and I wish the devs mixed things up more. There is some light platforming in Steel Rising. It's mostly whatever, but sometimes it gets confusing. There are some indicators on where to jump, but they're not clear at points and they made me run around the area for like 5 minutes with lotion on my dick stroking my shit. 
And other times, there are jumps that doesn't look reachable, but it is. Still Rising has side quests and you have to backtrack to previous finished levels to do some of them. I found backtracking to be confusing since you've unlocked every shortcut on the way to the end and have already been everywhere so you don't know where the new content is. Luckily you can use the compass to find your way around the map. The problem is that the compass deactivates once you switch to another item. Let's say you're on your way to do a quest and a group of enemies decide to gangbang you and you take a few hits. You pull up your oil barrette to heal in the middle of the fight. Now the waypoints are gone and you have to pull up the compass again. It wouldn't be this troublesome if there weren't so many enemies in every corner trying to finger Uranus. But guess what, it's a soul slike so you can't get rid of that. If only the compass was just a button press away and lets the waypoints stay up. Or let players use teleportation to travel to the nearest vestal from the quest they're doing to minimize the gangbangs. Now that I think about it, why is there no fast travel between save points? When you first activate a vessel, you can see it come up from the ground. What if for fast travel, you can go down into the underground network of tunnels or something to get around the map? That would have been awesome and lore friendly. But no, we gotta dodge gangbangs just like in real life. Overall, the gameplay is not bad. I enjoy the combat, although it's a bit too easy, and there are some quality of life changes needed to make the game flow smoother. It's story time, if you don't want spoilers, go to this timestamp to skip. Or go to the second timestamp to see the Cagliostro Secrets DLC. To be honest, I don't remember much from the story. It's boring, especially for someone who don't know shit about the French Revolution or the important historical figures involved. There are some cool things though. Still Rising takes place during an alternate universe French Revolution with robots, blackjack, and hookers. Okay, maybe not the latter two, but there are a lot of killer robots. The king went mad and replaced his soldiers with robots. In this universe, human souls can be harvested, I think, and they can be put inside mechanical bodies. So by killing his soldiers, the king basically put their souls into killer robots to make them work for him forever. The robots are made by an inventor called Vulcanson. I can't pronounce French for shit. French class did nothing for me, so I'm just gonna say what I see, I don't know. The game starts with the queen worried about being trapped in a mansion by the king and sends you, Aegis, an ultimate assassin automat dancer, to see what's up outside. Shit's fucked, so Aegis goes around France freeing former servants of the king to form a rebel group of sorts to free the country of its tyrant king. It sounds cool on paper, but a majority of the story is told through these flashbacks with these dudes in wigs talking to each other and getting kidnapped. It's boring and I don't remember anything these guys said. There's something about the presentation that just didn't grab me by the balls and start fondling. Anyway, the king's servants get captured by big robots and gets put into these nightmare coffins that powered bigger robots to fight you. The guy ordering the robots around is Cagliostro. He's like the right hand man of the king, I guess. He's always doing the work, looking evil and shit. You rescue the servants, they join the rebel resistance group. You repeat that a few times and the end. Valkinson is also a big part of the story. Aegis was originally a dancer robot made by Valkinson for his daughter, Athenai, as a birthday gift, but was later repurposed into a killing machine when the king saw the potential in her. Remember what I said before about robots needing souls to operate? Well, Athenai was put into one of those nightmare coffins in order to give Aegis life. I guess Valkinson didn't like that very much and stopped working for the king and ends up stuck in the gulag. By the end, Aegis developed her own personality, kinda, and tries to rescue Vulcanson. She was too late and he died, it, but she was able to save Athena. Cagliostro runs off like a pussy and the king is finally stopped. The king does a little melodramatic speech, gets his head cut off, and they all lived happily ever after. The end. The story is boring, it's got cool concepts, but it didn't grab me. None of the characters were particularly interesting. There's nothing much to say. You gather allies, kill some bosses, and the king dies. I wish there's more to it, but it is what it is. For DLC, we have Cagliostro's Secrets. It's basically an extra level to play through. You rescue a woman who's there to visit a friend who turns out to be another of the king's former servants who, you guessed it, got captured and put into a nightmare coffin to control a big robot. The boss is alright, it's got a big pen and it looks funny. 
Before starting the DLC, I heard that it's around 2 to 3 hours long, but I finished it in just under an hour. I got the best deal edition, which is about $5 more than the standard edition. It's not worth it. There are some new enemy types which is cool and I would have liked to see them in the main game, but there's not a whole lot of content here. The DLC by itself is $15. That right there is Highway Robert. I'd rather get scammed by the claw machines at the arcades. Just get the standard edition. The DLC is not worth the asking price and it feels like it should have been in the game from the beginning. Steel Rising is an okay game. The graphics are decent but the performance is inconsistent. I enjoy the combat but it's a bit too easy and repetitive. The story is boring and the DLC is not worth its asking price. It can be fun at times, just be sure to grab it on sale. That's all for me, like and subscribe and all that. See you next time. Later.